So the palette knife's terrifying. Here's some top tips on how to make these things a lot easier. Coming up. Hey again there guys, Emma here from Paint and Pino giving you some top tips for all things art and design and today we're going to look at how to try and make using a palette knife an awful lot easier. I know it's something that a lot of people get quite intimidated by or they get really frustrated by because they think they're really difficult to use. Well today I'm going to try and show you some tips on how to create really effective palette knife style paintings but without necessarily having to use one of these things. So the first thing I like to do is actually practice with cardboard. This stuff is great because you can really manipulate it, you can bend it around, you can get a lot of control over the way you're using your actual cardboard. It's a lot easier than having to be stuck with something like this, which is a hard blade. And obviously the blade, although it does bend and you can get manipulation, it's obviously a little bit more intimidating when it comes to having control. So the first thing we're gonna do is just gonna practice some basic techniques. The one thing you don't wanna do when using cardboard is just to keep going with the same direction because it gets very, very repetitive in terms of painting. So what I like to do is I, I've got my plate of colors just here. I like to actually mix the color on the paper. So I'm just gonna mix up, I'm just gonna start off by mixing up a nice yellow and orange, almost like a sunset-esque color. So predominantly yellow. And then we're just going to work this across the page. So you want to be quite thick with your paint. One thing we like to use as artists is um, an impasto gel. I have actually left a link just below which shows you how to make your own DIY impasto gel because it can be quite expensive to buy in the shops. But it enables you to thicken your acrylic without having to use loads and loads of expensive acrylic paint. So I'm just going to put some of my own DIY impasto gel. I'm just going to spread it around here quite lucidly. You can either mix it beforehand. I like to work quite quickly, so I like to work it straight onto my page. So you're going to go quite thick with the, with the paint and we're just going to work that in. You only get a sense of how thick this is, it's really beautiful. A little bit more yellow. So you can see how I'm trying to be quite quick with the direction so that I don't end up getting too monotonous or too repetitive with the actual distribution of paint. I'm just going to add some red here so we're going to start blending this in. Now the key with any, um, this is really quite an impressionist type of painting that we're going to be producing today, what you don't want to do is over mix the paint. You want to be able to see those individual colours I'm actually basing this on Monet's um, Sunset at Venice, so it's going to have some really lovely, diverse, bold use of colour going on here. If you are familiar with using palette knives, you'll realise how once you get confident with the technique, they really are beautiful in terms of being able to work quite quickly. My artistic style has changed very much over the years. I used to be very much a perfectionist, so I'd spend hours and hours with fine detail brush, trying to create the exact colour. But actually, I've learned over the years, I find it a much more dynamic way of working when you can work in a really quick, fast style. So I'm just making sure now that I vary up the, uh, the direction of the cardboard. What you will find after a while that the cardboard gets a little bit soggy, so I tend to have a few pieces that I can just vary up. Alright, so I'm just going to keep working with red. So again, a little bit more of my homemade impasto gel. So this is simply just PVA glue and baby powder or talcum powder. It really helps to just thicken the paint quite quickly. It will have an element of opacity to it because obviously you've got the white talcum powder coming through. So you have to compensate with that with a little bit sort of more of a strong use of colour. But you can really get a lovely thick sense to this. And with it being PVA glue, it actually gives a nice sheen to your paint. Alright, so it's working quite quickly here. You'll notice there's a few gaps. I'm just going to go over those with a bit more of a flatter technique. This is where your palette knife actually believe it or not, will be easier. So once you're confident using this and not worried about 
having that lack of control. I certainly recommend purchasing yourself a little palette knife. I know you can get the plastic ones, but I really think the metal ones are so much easier to use. Right, I'm just going to work back into the yellow. And then we're going to start working up towards that sunset. A little bit of green on there just coming through, that's okay. This sounds a little bit more right, you can always work that over. See how much paint I've got on there, it's quite a lot. It'll be quite, quite bold in terms of your selection of paint. And then at the top I'm just going to finish it off. that hint of blue just to go up into the sky. Once again you want to keep blending this through so now it's all nice and white, I'm just going to keep working that like yellow, I'm going to get that little green coming through, that's fine. I'll work that over again with some more red in a moment. Of course, when you're normally using a palette knife, you actually have to have a cloth handy at all times so you can wipe your palette knife. The great thing about using cardboard, you either just rip it off or chuck it out and get another piece. So you've got to, you haven't got to worry quite so much about cleaning up. One thing you'll, if you watch these videos regularly, you'll find me here a lot of the time, which is it's one of the hardest things in an is knowing when to stop. I think we're pretty much there because you don't want to overwork that paint. Okay. Now I might just let that dry, um, especially if you're going to do the foreground detail. So if you're looking at doing any foreground detail, you'd want this background to dry in the first place. Um, so, but it'll certainly give you an idea of the type of work you can do in terms of manipulating and how easy it is to use this technique. And you get effects that you could not possibly get if you were using a brush. I'm just going to show you how thick the paint currently is. So hopefully you've seen today guys how easy it is to really try and get yourself used to that palette knife technique. Obviously once you're confident with that technique you can then start to upgrade onto some lovely palette knives like these here. This is a painting that you might want to try and produce, so this is obviously based on the famous Monet painting, but it gives you a sense of what you can achieve when you really get confident with that really thick impasto technique. If you have liked today's video guys, so please do hit that like button just below as it really does help our video. And if you'd like to see some more top tips, we do upload regular videos, so please hit that subscription button just below with the notification bell so that you know when we're coming back online. Alrighty guys, we'll look forward to seeing you next time. Happy